be sharing with all of you this extra special interview with Paco Arango, who is the writer and director of this film called The Healer. Now this interview um, is extra special to me because, well first of all, there's so many true stories behind this incredible film that you might have not even realized. So please join me to hear this interview and everything that Paco has to say about his film, The Healer. Hey everyone, I'm Zoe Canella, reporting for Kids First and Zoe at the Movies. Today I'm so excited because I'm talking to the wonderful Paco Arango. How are you? I'm good. Good to talk to you. Good to hear. Um, the Healer is a very special film, um, not only because of the message, but also because I feel like this film can actually heal people. And this film was number one on Netflix, and it's 100% charitable, which is amazing. And you did donated no, $13.5 million. Holy moly, that's a lot of money. Holy moly, yeah. It was a dream. It was a dream to create a film that could be really 100% for children. Um, I've worked with children with cancer uh, for the past 20 years. Um, and it started as a very crazy dream. My family didn't want me to do the film because they thought I was nuts. Uh, and now there's got to be a lot of more crazy people like me. Because um, it first came out in 2017 and it started, started going country to country, Spain, Mexico, Central America, all the way down to Italy and successfully generating um, audience and money. And finally, the States was the final, no, the final, the final prize. And when the movie came out in uh, about a year ago, it didn't do much. It kind of just sizzled out, you know? And I figured, well, it's the States. It's a very hard market. That's what it is. And there you go, little by little, you know, this, this whole horrible pandemic has put us in home, you know, and, and the movie slowly started creeping up in Netflix. And one day they called me, they said, I just saw your movie in Netflix. And I said, how in God's name did you find me in Netflix? You know? And um, it got to number one in, in early June, a little miracle, a little miracle. Yes. Um, the fact that you donated these profits is just, it's amazing. And you were also a singer. I think you released five albums as well. So why did you want to start filmmaking? Well, first of all, I used to sing a while ago, <laughs> um, and um, I wanted to change my life. I wanted to, you know, when you're singing and when you're when you're you know, you're really in front of the of the of the screen, um, you know, popularity sounds like a lot of fun, but it's very intrusive. Um, and I figured that um, if I did films, I could be as happy and not be in front of the curtain. Um, Doing films was my dream, you know, because it encompasses music, encompasses light, encompasses acting, so many things that I, that I cherish. And I went for it, and I went for it, and um, I still composed. The last song in The Healer's Mind that is sang by a 16 year old, but it's fine. So, so music's like a girlfriend. You never break up, mm -hmm. but, uh, um, but it's on the side. Do you still sing? Yes, I do. I do, once in a while I do. Um, when something really touches my heart, um, I do, and it's nice. It's nice to sing because because you want to, not because you have to. Yes, um, and you also have this organization that you created called Aladina. Can you tell us more about this organization? It sounds so cool. Yeah, I started as a volunteer in the year two thousand and one. Uh, my idea was going once a week for a couple of hours to a children's uh, cancer ward, and it literally took over my life. I started going every day after two months. Um, and I shouldn't be there and I kept going. Finally, I was accepted. And um, two years later, when I was going every day, I started doing things that were not done by other organizations. Some things that were done in the States, like teen rooms. Teen rooms are, for example, uh, rooms in hospitals where teenagers can have their own privacy within a hospital, which is amazing because you know teenagers need, you know they have two problems, obviously cancer, but spending every single day with your parents can be a little bit nuts so so it's a way of giving them some hope so i created my own foundation it's called aladina it's like aladdin with an a aladina o-r-g and um it's 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 my life it's uh we we tend to ten thousand children every year we we make hospitals a better place and uh, and so many more things um it's a it's a it's a wonderful thing that we do it sounds so amazing and i love that you do all this special stuff for children as well um, Thanks, Zoe. Yes, of course. The character Alec Bailey is the qualities. What were you mainly looking for for the actor to actually play this character? 
Well, the film, the film, for those who haven't seen it, is about a man who's got the gift of healing. I have arthritis. My blood sugar is off the chart. Yeah, I'm like a factory of kidney stones, man. <laughs> there seems to be a bit of a mistake here. I fix the electrical thing. Says so, so in the ad? The healer. I fix and wet away. And doesn't want it, okay? I've always wanted the gift of healing. People want to fly and be invisible. I wanted to heal. And he's a handsome guy, and and the the when he decides he doesn't want the gift, like in story, like in fairy tales, well, the gift goes away. And it's a teenager, a very sick teenager with cancer that, that says, I don't believe in healers. My parents think you're a healer. Hi. No, I'm not a healer. Healers don't exist, Alec. This is my gift to them. Alex, reconsider. He will try to cure me. <laughs> You and I are gonna fake it, and when I leave, nobody's gonna say anything, okay? So this girl changes his, his mind. So I needed an actor that could portray a very humane uh, man, who at the beginning you think he's a big jerk, and as the movie goes along, you start to understand that he's suffered some pain too. Yes, that's, made him, that's, that's, that's made him kind of a, a jerk, but on a defensive way, you know? And, and I think, you know, because even though the movie is called The Healer and it is about healing people, I am really talking about healing the soul. You know, I, think, I think we all need, especially now with what's going on, you know, we need somebody to heal our soul. You know? And I think we've all, all, in our lifetimes, we encounter people that really make a difference and, and, and get us out of a, a black hole where, where we might be. And that's, I needed an actor that could portray that. I think he did amazing. I loved the film, by the way. I thought it was Good. amazing. Um, and yeah, Caitlin Bernard, who played Abigail, which was the sick girl, she was amazing. Um, what do you, how do you think Abigail impacts Alec to really want to heal people? So much so. Let me tell you a quick thing about Abigail is the character, the name of the character, and that was not the name that I wrote when I wrote the script. Um, she had another name, but when I got to Canada, um, I met a mother whose daughter had just passed away. She was 18 and her name was Abigail. So um, I, I asked permission to call her Abigail. So the poem that the Abigail, the actress, reads in the movie is actually a poem by Abigail. Um, I did a casting for, I, I think I saw 500 teenagers in Canada and found Caitlin, who's amazing. And it's critical. This, this girl is, let me just remind you of one phrase. Uh, that, uh, that that at one point she says, you know, they're talking about heaven, you know, and and Alec clearly tells her he doesn't believe in heaven, you know? and 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 then Abigail says, you know, when I get there, I'm gonna scare the beep out of you because I'm gonna come after you, you know. Um, so she clearly zaps him. She clearly saps him, and makes him understand that there's something much more important in life, in life, other than your personal interests. Yes. Live for me like tomorrow's your last day. Okay, now to wrap everything up, you dedicated this film to Paul Newman. Um, not a lot of people knew that he was actually a philan philanthropist. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, he, he was an amazing man, Zoe. Uh, Paul Newman was so popular that he decided to create uh, a, a, a line of food called Newman's Own, where the popcorn's really popular the salad dressing is really popular, and all that money goes to charity. This actor, Angel of a Man, who passed away 10 years ago, unfortunately, but the company's still generating money, has donated to date in excess of $850 million. Wow. That's, you know, exactly. So, you know, so at the end of the movie, I say, you know, healers do exist. And yeah. Paul Newman was one of them, you know what I mean? Because even though everyone, would get, well, everyone wants to get cured of their ailments, um, it's really the soul that I'm talking about when I say the healer. And certainly Paul Newman did, his, did, did, did a good job. Yes, thank you so much, Paco. I had such an amazing time talking to you. Everyone, make sure to check out The Healer on Netflix. It's out already. And thank you so much once again. I love the film. Thank you, Zoe. Pleasure talking to you.